Kirikoto, uh, welcome to everybody. It's uh, great to see you here. This is a really great day in the history of our district, but particularly a great day in the history of Kaiapoi and uh, surrounding areas and Pines and Karaki and so on. It's uh, really good to see you here. I'd like to acknowledge uh, Roger, your presence, um, Honourable Clayton Cosgrove MP, um, my fellow councillors including Deputy Mayor Kevin Felstead, um, Kaapoi Community Board members uh, and other Community Board members, I can see at least one person from Rangiora here um, and there may be others. And uh, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the presence of our, 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 our Kaapoi North School um, uh, residents of uh, and citizens of Kaapoi here. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I can see a number of uh, distinguished people there. Welcome to all of you. It's uh, great to have you here. On the, uh, in September 2010, uh, Kaiapui suffered a huge amount of damage. And one of the things that um, shocked a lot of people, of course, was the amount of liquefaction and land damage that occurred in this area. And uh, through a number of months, there was a lot of uh, work uh, being done to repair that land and it will plan for that, that, that repair. But then the February quake and the huge amount of damage that occurred in Christchurch meant that the government decided they needed to rethink their approach to the areas that were damaged. And so we had this uh, um, concept of called red zoning. And I want to first perhaps uh, apologise in a sense about using the term red zoning because it has become a, a convenient term. But in as a number of people have made clear to us, red zones no longer exist because red zones were about a government offer which has now expired. And so if anybody can come up with a quick two-syllable word for this, these areas of our district that used to be called red zones, um, I'd love to hear it because I haven't come up with it yet. This is an important day because the, the former red zones are occupy around about 20% uh, of our area here in Kaapui uh, and beyond in Pines and Kairaki. It also, if you count the houses, around about 8% of the Waimakariri housing stock was affected. That's a considerable uh, number of houses and, and each one of those houses of course represented a life, a family, a household um, and also held, for many people, the the, the dreams of those people, how they looked forward to uh, their future in this community. And that government decision and, and, and the earthquake before that, of course, um, have, have changed those people's lives. I, a few weeks ago, I was at an, um, an art, a photographic display in, uh, in Oxford where uh, an Oxford photographer had photographed people standing in front of uh, their former properties. Uh, either houses still standing or empty, uh, empty sections. And it drove home to me something that I already knew, but it just it drove home again, the, the huge emotional wrench for many of the of people leaving their, their areas. And I think, first of all, we do need to acknowledge that. And, uh, and I will say that in this process that we're going through, the former owners are very much a very important part of, of that decision-making process that we're embarking on as, um, as we move forward here. The other, the other thing is, of course, that is very important is that we are very conscious of people who are still living in the area, either within what used to be the red zones or on the, on the edges, because it's your neighbourhoods and it's so extremely important for all of you um, what happens around you and, and, and adjacent to you. But beyond that, it is a matter for the entire Kaapoi community and it's actually a matter for the entire Waimakariri district. If you think, for instance, of the number of people from all over our district and beyond who go down uh, Featherston Avenue in Kairaki to get to the, um, to the fishing at the river mouth or go to the, the boat club, uh, that's very much part of our district. Likewise, um, to the um, uh, boat ramps and, and, and the other facilities along the Kaapoi River here. What we're doing now, what we're embarking on, it's already underway. If you haven't got onto the website, I suggest you do so. But there are going to be other opportunities as well, is to give your ideas and submit your ideas of how you would like to see this part of our district and part of Kaapui would look like in the future. This is the beginning of a process. The initial process finishes um, uh, next month. 
But that's not the end of it all because there's, there's going to be, have to be a filtering of the ideas, uh, the council, the Kaapoi Community Board and the government th acting through SERA um, will be par all part of that decision making process and there will, be a, there will be points along the way where we have to go back to the community and say have we got this right, is this what it could look like, these are the time frames and so on. So it's going to be a, a very, I'm re I've been looking forward to this time for, for a long time, I'm really excited about it and I hope all of you are too. So uh, thank you for coming along here. I, uh, Roger, I welcome you to the podium to, to give the, the other side of the story, if you like. Uh, <laughs> we're clapping time. Well, good morning, everybody. It's really it's great to be here. Um, and there's no other side of the story at all, David. You know, I mean, I've, you know, we're very much partners with... Um, with my Area District Council, but very much partners with this community, this community who's been through a huge, huge amount over these last, well, it's nearly four years, isn't it? It's kind of strange. It's what are we, we're actually three years, three years, 10 months, 24 days, or something like that. Um, and in fact, this is a community which I think has stood really, really strong from the very, very beginning. And I think that strength in this community starts with local institutions, but it is in particular the local institution that you lead, David, and I'd really salute that. Um, where we're going here is we've got, you know, we've, we're kicking off a consultation process about what happens to um, this area of land going forward. And there are, you know, different areas of land. There's the area of land around here at, um, in Kaiapoi, but there's also land down at um, Pines Beach um, and at Kairaki as well. So I think that's all... That's all really exciting. There may be different time periods and obviously different uses for that land as well. Um, I think David's points about us making sure we listen carefully to the wider community. But we also listen very carefully to the people on the edges of these areas will have a huge impact, but also the people who are still living in these areas as well. It's nice to see Brent and Shirley here as well. Who I, who I know have been, you know, stalwarts of the, of the community. And it's good to, I'm really much looking forward to seeing their participation in this process um, as well. So this is a milestone of where we go of, in terms of the recovery. Um, I hear what you've said, David, about wanting to banging on about this for a long time. I wouldn't call it banging on. I'd say there's been conversations. Um, and we very much for, look forward to this next stage in the conversation and then conversations beyond this conversation as we work out exactly where we go next. So thank you all very much for coming. And I think we've got a cup of tea. There's also, we've got um, the container, which has got, which is, which has got some audio visual um, assistance as well. So thank you very much all for your support. And we very, very much look forward to your ideas, however, however thin or however fat they are. Thank you. <laughs>